Paragon is a single botanical cordial range combining perfect balance of acidity and sweetness and flavor all together. So it's not meant to be a quick fix for your drinks, but it will kind of elevate whatever you're serving in, like whatever you're making with it. Welcome Drink Stuff fans. We are up in Manchester for another special today. I'm with Nate from Monin. Uh, but before we go any further, we have to give a massive shout out to this bar, Tariff and Dale. Uh, where is this? Where, where are, are we? Ancoast? Are we Northern Quarter? Uh, Northern Quarter in Manchester. No Northern Quarter. So a big shout out to these guys for letting us film in here this morning. I'm up here in Manchester because it was Rumfest at the weekend. Uh, so me and Nate organised to sort of film, uh, film on the Monday afterwards. So if you hear any background noises, if you hear the staff, it's not their fault. We're interrupting them, so we'll just Spontate go with today. the flow. <laughs> but today, we are here to talk about Paragon, which is uh, one of uh, Monin's brands. Uh, this is kind of Nate's speciality so we're going to go into that we're going to give you guys some inspiration of how to use it what the actual product is hopefully some knowledge bombs uh, to throw in there but for a lot of you some of you would have watched the nrb blog you might have recognized nate from uh, that i kind of couldn't get get the whole sort of talk that you did up at nrb about this but we're going to try and replicate that a little bit today but before we go any further nate say hello hi what's your your bartender first and foremost or was back in yes. the day yes previously a bartender worked in uh, lots of bars in the north Where, of the when was UK. the last time you made cocktails in uh, <laughs> seven years ago seven or eight years so yeah. you've been so last seven or eight years you've been i've been working for brands so yeah. as a brand ambassador working for uh, a big american whiskey brand and then over as a brand manager looking after a whiskey portfolio for a distributor in the uk and i moved over to monin because i felt that i really kind of stepped away from the trade and i wanted to get back involved with the bartenders so, and kind of so is whiskey your thing then is whiskey off we haven't chatted about this yes uh, i guess i guess i like rum's my thing yeah so you can... whiskey i really really love whiskey yeah working in a whiskey business for the last scotch eight years. american Oh. Everything. Everything. Yeah, if wow. that's okay to say. Yeah, no, that's, that's fine. <laughs> um, I think they're all just like so different and there's one for every occasion. And likewise as well, before that, I used to work in a champagne bar and I also worked for a vodka brand as well. I'm going to so, start calling him Posh Nate now. Yeah, champagne yeah, exactly. bar. Yeah, wow. long time, long time I ago. I didn't know that. Yeah, I sort of, I knew a little bit about the whiskey stuff, but I didn't, didn't know that. Yeah, wow. yeah, in a previous life. In a previous life. So how long have you been with Monin? Uh, I've been with Monin for about six months. Um, oh, so new relati thing. relatively new. Wow, yes. that's that's right me as well because I yes. thought it was quite a, quite a while. Actually. No, it, I I look really old, like I've been here forever, but um, actually I'm really. It's new like me. We're, we're both like 20. Three, twenty-four, twenty-five. Yeah, about that. Yeah, about that. <laughs> so you are, are you technically part of Lee's team or are you sort of not, you're sort of a different team, aren't you? Yes, yeah, so I sit, I kind of sit over two teams. So I, yeah. I, I deal with Lee on a day-to-day -day basis and the, and the beverage expert team, but also as well, I work on the trade marketing and brand yeah. development side as well. So it's a very, very broad. So uh, you're broad based role. up north, aren't you? I'm based so up north. So what your territory is what? Outside Bermuda. of the M25. <laughs> right. wow. What for gap? Anything yeah, north of the what for gap? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you travel quite a lot for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, my main focus is the north. So yeah. it would be Leeds, Liverpool, Manchester, Sheffield, Nottingham, um, North Newcastle, bits of Scotland but as well. You live here though, don't you? I live in Manchester. Live yeah. Right. yeah. I feel like an honorary northerner. I'm not from the, the north originally, but I've been here Where almost as long as uh, from the south, East Anglia near Norwich. Are you? Yeah. You're my neck of the woods. Yes, lowest off originally. Lowest stuffed? Yeah. Sorry. Oh, didn't <laughs> That's yeah. just good, but I didn't know that at all. I know it's a, it's a, you know. Wow. It's a safe, it's a safe zone. We can, we can, we can yeah, divulge we can, our personal can, secrets. Yeah, like. well, this sort of thing. Well, I'm Cornish, <laughs> so it's weird because the West, the sort of East Anglian accent never comes out for me. But when I yeah. go home to Cornwall, my Cornish accent, oh, yeah. it will never come out now. Yeah. But as soon as I go across that border, I'm like, wow. Well, yeah. yeah so we're obviously, where people are from, like from Lowestoft in that area, they sound like farmers. <laughs> so I realised that I needed to really lose that accent. So that's why I kind of have quite a normal, neutral accent. <laughs> Brilliant. Like if I call my parents, then uh, obviously I'm sound like oh, they, they. we're going to the flowers. Oh, right, so, right. So cool. <laughs> All that stuff. Right then, let's, let's hit the thing. <clears throat> yes. Paragon, we're here today to talk about Paragon, which is a brand from Money. In, in, sum it up in, I don't know, a sentence, three sentences, cool. four. So, how, for those people coming onto the Drink Stuff website or seeing that for the first time, give them so, what is it? So, Paragon is a single botanical cordial range combining perfect balance of acidity and sweetness and flavor all together. So it's not meant to be a quick fix for your drinks, but it will kind of elevate whatever you're serving in like whatever you're making with it. Cool, so totally different kind of vibe to Monin syrups. In, yeah. yeah, so I would say that this is kind of like a, an evolutionary step. These are a bit more kind of serious, a bit more, I would want to say mature, but they are a little bit more kind of like specific flavor yeah. profiles. So okay. these, this particular range of Paragon, and, and it's like the, the premise is, 
kind of creating like an encyclopedia of flavors, really. Right. The first season is some, is peppers and the pepper and the pepper family, which we'll discuss in a bit is quite diverse. Um, but these are single varietal pepper cordials. So the we have uh, white penja, we have rhubarb, and we have timberberry from Nepal. Very very specific flavor profiles. Wow. So Hank, so before we go any further, we're going to talk about these. You mm. said first season there was more. Coming, I assume, assume so. We don't know. We as, yeah, I, I like. We're just I think, seeing how, like any brand goes, we're seeing how that goes. And yeah, then, exactly. Right. Last last week I was in Monin's head, uh, Monin headquarters. HQ. Yeah, I saw you all great. having a bit of a laugh and a giggle. Yeah, it was fantastic. And there was like you know the R and D team. There's just a lot of plans for exciting yeah. new things in the future. And that's just always you know we always want to keep innovating and making sure that we're providing solutions for bartenders and the drinks world. Um, you know, so where there's a next kind of we see the next kind of solution needed. Yeah, we'll hopefully provide something for that. Wow. So you, all right, so I, I'm going to encourage you, especially I know there's a lot of you guys at home, home bartenders like our and sort of like lower end pubs and bars. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I just don't mean five star hotel bars. <laughs> you know, we, I want you to get kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Experimental and ha have some fun with stuff. Yes, we know there's the morning syrups, but you can have a bit more, even, even the more, let's just go for it. Sorry, Bassie, I know you're going to hate this, but even the more pr pretentious sort of stuff, has a place with home bartenders. That's how I yeah. see it. You can kind of, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to call that pretentious, but it's it's a little bit more elevated this, than... I, yeah, I would say this is elevated and also unexpected as well. The flavor profiles that you'll get from this are unlike anything you've ever tasted before. Yeah. So, I mean, just, we've... He's just, he's just poured me some little samples there and they're like, so wow, we're banging. Looking at the, you know, where the ingredients come from, that, you know, they're not readily available kind of products in the UK every day. So these are, the white penja is a fermented white peppercorn, uh, so it has this really incredible funk to it. The rhubarb is like a, uh, kind of a, a type of plant that grows in Ethiopia and it has this really incredible, um, almost like passion fruit kind of flavor profile without being passion fruit. And the timberberry is called grapefruit berry um, and that comes from Nepal and it's like, it's kind of a mix between Sichuan and Camomile, it's really, really incredible. Hang on, you just blow me away. Because my favourite one, I've, I've tried these sort of before. My favourite one would I said the passion fruit. There, there's no passion fruit in that. No, no, no. This is the rhubarb is called is called passion berry as well, uh, and it's used in medicinal like kind of. That's just blowing me away. Like medicinal kind of. Uh, I just assumed that passion fruit was part of the botanical mix or whatever. No, no. It's like that is nuts. this is this is the thing. The, these these ingredients are just so so special and so incredibly kind of unique and different that using them will just change your the profile of your drink. And like I say, it's a mix between sweet sweetness, flavor, um, uh, and, and acidity. But also wow. we're using other ingredients as well. So for the Monin syrups, you know, we might, we're really trying to call out that kind of central flavor of, for example, a strawberry or a banana or whatever we're looking for. With the Paragons, it's really, it's really about Exploration, yeah. you know, adventure to new flavor botanicals is, is quite awesome. Can we just clear before we dive into? We'll go through each flavor sort of thing, but and each berry, a uh, uh, pepper in that. But one, to clarify, are we assuming these are sort of same shelf life kind of thing as the morning syrups? Will they go longer, shorter? Like morning syrups are. Yeah. Which, so it will be marginally marginally shorter, shorter. But in, in terms of shelf life. I mean. It, this refrigerated is just, or back bar or you can keep it on the back, back bar, bar you, or you can keep it refrigerated it, it really doesn't matter it depends on how you want to mix them i yeah. guess because it will change the texture ever so slightly but in principle there are volatile there are still kind of volatile ingredients in this so during the the production process for example with the penja we use three different types of process we use a maceration a, uh, a distillation and a supercritical co2 extraction which is very very scientific i heard this at nrb <laughs> i saw your little slides and just went Poof. yeah Three, wow, three stages of yeah. So the the other day, I actually had a I uh, had a drink with a, a friend of mine who's a chemist, and he explained to me supercritical CO two extraction in great length. So I won't bore you with that today. He also expa explained to me mass, mass spectrometry, um, but in principle, to get the full one hundred percent of the flavor profile, you can't do that by just using one flavor extraction method. So you have to build up layers of flavor and la like layers of intensity of flavor by using multiple methods to extract it. So before we get into that, I've got another story. So yeah. I did say there's going to be questions yeah. coming out here. Cool. Before, is that, are you telling me that gin, like gin, take all those botanicals out of gin, they could be getting so much flavor, more flavor out of those botanicals? 100%. If, if they just, because that's how people relate that yeah. home. When you say botanicals and distillation, yeah. wow. That's exa that is exactly true. So we, <laughs> With something like supercritical CO2 extraction, in 
spell it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. primarily used in the fragrance industry. So you know when you're when you're like really wanting to gr create and extract the true flavor, 100% um, of it as much as possible, you're going to use supercritical CO2 extraction because it's a more stable, long-term um, uh, flavor extraction method. Wow. Yeah. So supercritical. I'm not even going to say super that. Supercritical. CO2, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. <laughs> Infusion <coughs> yep. and this and distillation. distillation. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So, so, we, so we kind of understand, well, we should be understanding what infusion and distillation are. I don't think yeah. we kind of need to explain that. But I think, yeah, that whole... We do, we do alcoholic distillation yeah. and, hydro, and hydrosol distillation as well. So depending on the, on the pepper uh, or on the ingredient, we do change the process because, you know, you want to get the best of it. Um, and so, for example, I'll, maybe, maybe when we when we do this, uh, uh, when it goes live, we can actually include the little slide just to show. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, just so you can kind of really visualise kind of how much flavour you're getting. Is that from the talk? And I'll be yeah. yes, yeah, that would be brilliant. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll edit those in, so I might pop them up on screen now. But yeah. we'll kind of. So the CO two extraction might take like eighty percent of the flavour, but then there might be some top notes that we don't get that we uh, you know, or, or maybe some woody notes that you might need from like a longer maceration kind of infusion uh, method. And so that's when you're going to get kind of more of like the heavier soupy notes. So many, yeah. you know, I'm chatting to Lee about some of like the morning syrups about the R&D team, like yeah. what they get up to. Oh uh, yeah. That must be, into, have you ever kind of seen that? Have you ever kind of so, experimented? Have you had, have you been that sort of side of things? So not necessarily with morning, but yeah, in the past I have, have. I have, I have been on uh, MPD teams and stuff like this. Wow. Um, I actually developed a product that is in market. Um, yeah, it's in supermarkets. Wait, wait, well, <laughs> it was a syrup. Sod it, well. sod it. He's giving his time. What's that product? Uh, oh, we won't. No, I don't. no, you don't want it. If you don't want it, he'll t I'll tell you. He'll tell me off camera. Yeah. Then. yeah, I'm joking. I'm joking. So, without further ado, let's let's take whichever one is that you would say is the cool. first one. It doesn't matter, but whichever one we're going for. I would go for Timberberry first. Timberberry. You've got a little glass. Yeah. So this is. So this is the Timberberry. Yep. So it's the far, one. the one on the far right. Um, Pour a little bit in there. So what what should that be reminded me of? What so this one, it? so this one is called grapefruit pepper. So you, almost like a, I think it's like a white grapefruit zest, that kind of oily. I was going to say citrusy. Yeah, citrusy, oily. <coughs> yeah. So we're using uh, different types of, of citrus in this as well. So we use citric acid and we use gluconic acid. Right. <coughs> now gluconic acid is that a little bit sense. specific. Um, citric acid, you'll you'll kind of know as ascorbic acid, that, that kind of stuff. Um, very familiar, I'm sure, but. Gluconic acid is a, is a specific type of acid that's found uh, primarily in honeys. Uh, and this is like a really, it's almost like a flavorless honey, but gives you a really long sustaining acidity. That is a great explanation. Yeah. As soon as you said honey, that all just sort of clicks yeah. into. Yeah, it gives you that really nice. long, yeah. uh, like long sustained uh, acidity rather than bringing that kind of really, like really a, like forward palate attack yeah. that you get from like a citric acid. Uh, and that's really important because, um, when you're using these ingredients, think of them as like um, you know, think of them almost as like a replacement acid. You know, we're going to make some drinks in a bit, but I'll, but you'll kind of realise that actually you probably don't necessarily need a, a, a fresh a fresh acid in this. You can actually just use something like this, and it's like a w bit of a one stop shop. Um, obviously, you know, bartender's creativity will always go beyond that, but uh, but as a good base, it's a really good start. Uh, start to make. So it which one is this? This is the, the Timber Berry. Tima. Oh, sorry. Oh, they're the all labelled at the front. Anyway. Yeah. Right. Okay. So it's that one, the little so, black. Yeah. So these ones, feel free to have, have some. You, so I'll the Timberberry. Ho hopefully you'll get that on the on the old camera. If I get sort of on there, you can sort of see those. I might put a couple in my, yeah, couple yeah, in my hand just so you can kind of see those. So, so these are all dried. Yeah. So with the peppers, or with the pepper family, um, when we think about peppers and relatives of the pepper family, it's a very, very broad, um, but also flavor diverse uh, category. There's about 3,000 um, relatives in the pepper family. Obviously, you've got um, Piper Nigen, which is the, um, the black peppercorn that we all know of, and obviously. Th that we see in the, in the UK, obviously. <laughs> um, that's like the main one and, the, big, and the, biggest, the biggest production. But actually, of these, yes, they're all technically in the pepper family, but true peppers, actually, the, pa the penja is the only true pepper in this right. collection. The other ones are uh, considered peppercorns, so they're kind of part of the family, but a different, but a different subspecies. I think that's bonkers how yeah. those flavours come out from. Our yeah. So this, the timberberry is actually really closely related to Szechuan pepper. So you might get a little bit of a like a like a zingy kind of numbness to it as well when you kind of if you if you were to crunch one. I'm not. Uh, sure. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> 
I trust him on that one. Yeah. That's nuts. Yeah. So these are like really, really sought after. Um, they grow in really harsh environments, really kind of high up, like high altitude. Um, and that's kind of what gives them these really Now, team. Timor Berry, yeah. Yeah, uh, Timor, yeah, from Nepal. Yeah, from Sorry, Nepal. that's yeah. where I was going. Yeah. Um, and with these, we don't use the seeds, so we just use the husks. Uh, the seeds are obviously used yeah. you know, in, in, other, in other things. The seeds are too bitter. And the husks have this um, yeah, this crazy, vibrant, almost like, a, I feel like kind of when you taste one like raw, it's kind of like electric. Like, it's, imagine what I would think of like as yeah. being electric. So, so that, what we've just seen, is the thing that's, um, the thing, the peppercorn that is, I was going to say distilled, not three ways. What's, what's the word? With the flavor extracted in three ways. Yeah, extracted three ways. So this one um, is uh, alcohol uh, distillation uh, and then supercritical CO2 extraction, this one. Right. Yeah. Oh, so it's not all three for each? No, no, no. Right. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. Right, right. Yeah, no, no, no. It, depends, it depends on the on the product. Right. So when we do the CO2 extraction, what we'll do is we'll grind up the peppers really, really small. And then we put a we, we put CO two in there, and we basically pressurize it to a supercritical state where it becomes almost like a it's like a liquid and a gas at the same time, uh, and then that's what carries and kind of like seeps into the pepper into the ground up material. Then it gets blasted through under pressure. It's absorbing all this flavor, uh, and then it's reliquified. Or uh, sorry, the product comes over, and then we, we capture the gas, and that gas is then put put back through. So you're you're lo you're not losing any flavor when you're processing it and then the the liquid that we're left with at the end is like the base almost kind of like the like a liquor I guess wow. and then we also reuse the uh, like the spent material as well so it can it's like a mustardy paste so we actually use that in the bottle as well so we really are layering like flavor so, top, like layers so and layers you, and layers get, of you can instantly sort of get and understand the quality yeah <clears throat> these are not just like I don't. I mean this in the nicest possible way, but they're not just like Monin sugar syrups. No, they, they are, are a million <coughs> miles away from being that. Yeah, yeah. So th this is the thing, I guess, with like with with Monin normal syrups. Yes, they're they're the best expression of that yeah. product, and you know there might be kind of layers in there, but with this, it's like it's a real focus on the on every op every available molecule of flavor. Um, you know, within within there. So. If you were to look at this, there's a, a type of analysis called mass spectrometry, <coughs> which weighs the. It's, it looks at, at the weight of the molecules in the liquid in the in the liquid that kind of give you different flavor profiles, um, and this is trying to get the highest proportion of those using these techniques. Wow. So this really was, um, you know, a, a celebration of, of of flavor flavor exploration and also kind of methodology. <coughs> oh, oh, oops. oh, nearly. Yeah. So Method, I've, done, I've yeah. done that with the sugar syrup down here. Well, yeah. I'm assuming that's sugar. Yeah. Unless it's vodka. <laughs> I don't know. We'll leave that there. Methodology, and pro like methodology and process, is just is just so important. And so when we first started this uh, this this project, we spoke to some of the best bartenders in the world, and the person that we kind of brought on board to kind of help us focus it was Alex Quatena. Oh. Uh, sorry, Steve, oh. um, but it was Alex Quatena, and he, using using him as kind of our our, our guide in the industry yeah. was a really good base because, you know, his focus on methodology and process is just is you know, unparalleled in, in the world of the But industry. yeah, so for, just dumb it down from my sort of point, Alex uh, Quatena kind of, it was Artesian, I forgot the years now, yeah. 2000, <coughs> and it was Artesian a for ago. a long, long time. 2003, 2015? Mm, yeah, maybe. It's something like that, but definitely up to sort of 2015, well, world's best bars, you know, that's him. And he won something with Monica Berg, 20, 20. Yes, recently they just won an I forget an what award. else was as well, but yeah, Monica Berg, another sort of They've got a place called Taylor Elementary is their current, is that, their current yes. place. Yeah. So Alex was very involved in... Yeah, yeah, t yeah definitely towards the, towards the start. Didn't he do one of the Coca-Cola signature mixes as well? Wasn't he involved in quite that? Probably, yeah. Quite I think probably. he did one of those, I yeah. think. I don't know, don't hold me to that, but yeah. that might have just been plucked out of me there. Wow, so that's that's the kind of, the first one. Yeah. The grapefruit. Yeah, and even though these are like specific flavours, you know, um, you, they they have kind of. I think they almost have like a sister spirit, or a, you know, a, a, oh, like, a right. like a okay. like a like a set of sibling spirits. That doesn't exclusively mean that they are only for those spirits. But I would say for the Timoberry, because it's got grapefruit, works really well with tequila. So if you think about like oh. Palomas and stuff like this, that's the kind of profile you'd be looking for. Oh. Something like this. Cheeky. Yeah. I like that. More than just a bartender, isn't it? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Something like that. Cool. 
So how do you want to do it? Do you want to move on to the next one or do you want yeah, to make I a quick drink with that? Or what, like, it's up to you, completely let's up to you. Let's move on to the next one. Move and on. We'll just cover the, cover the, so we'll the taste. So that's, that's that. Let's that's, put that one there. This is my second one. It's, my, it's the passion fruit. It's the Porta Star Martini flavour. Yep. <laughs> um, let's grab another glass. I think I've mixed mine up. <laughs> See, I've, I've done this before. I've, I'm clever. I've got mine in the right order. It's the one with the less, least in it, because it's the one I've chopped quite a bit of. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be a sugar high drive back to Cambridge later. So this is the rueberry, oh, or, so or passionberry. So good. Can you see that? I so know you'll get a close-up on the other camera. But. This is the really crazy thing, is like... When you, oops. Flipping dummy, get it on! If you have a smell of this, it's like chamomile and... and like chamomile and a little kind of like, almost like a passion fruit... Whoa! Like a passion fruit skin. So... By adding acidity to these as well, what we're doing is we're, we're enabling the body an opportunity to kind of capture more, like to understand and, and process more flavour as well. So this is the importance of the acidity with this one because it then when you actually taste it, it really tastes like like a like a bright passion fruit um, style. Oh, is, is it wrong? I actually get tea. This that. yeah, it's uh, kind of like chamomile. You, you, there's like a bitterness to it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Like Camellia sinensis, that kind of like almost like a cooked tea leaf kind of vibe there. It does smell like. It smells like, yeah, you nailed it. It's like, it's, wow, that's such a different sort of, I, I get it, because they're completely different sort of, I was going to say berries, but, well, they are, I suppose, but mm. <coughs> peppers. Wow, that is insane yeah. to smell that. But rue, again, rue as well, as a historical product, has been used for uh, medicinal kind of ingredients for years and years and years, I think going back to Roman times, but also, like, before that in uh, Central Africa. You know your stuff, don't you? <laughs> Wow. I'm just going to read you what it says on the back of the bottle, just so you can see that. Berry from a tropical shrub, endemic to... I shouldn't have read this. <laughs> What's that word? Bashi, bashito? Bashito. Bashito. Endemic to Bashito, the high plateau, with powerful and a unique profile. Mm. So this one is <coughs> infusion and alkylate, this one. So, so does that mean distillation? Alkylate, what's uh, yeah, so this alcoholic is, distillate? Yeah, it's an alcoholic distillate and an infusion. And when we're, infu when we're macerating, we're not macerating just in alcohol because that actually could overcook it. So what we're doing is we're reducing the, the infusion with water, uh, demineralized water, just to kind of give it a softer infusion yeah. process. And this, the, the infusion processes for all of these could take anywhere between one day and three weeks. Yeah. And they're constantly agitated as well, just to kind of make sure that they're, you know, we're, we're you know, Stirring it up, yeah. and making sure there's a good I think, I, th I think just trying in my sort of to dumb that down into my speak. I'm not sure whether you guys <laughs> are at home will understand this, but like take um, what brands go. Let's go down the gin route for a minute and let's talk something like Silent Pool. Yeah, Silent Pool. I forget how many botanicals it is now, it's like 40 something botanicals, but all of those different botanicals are di extracted or uh, what's the word distilled at, at different temperatures, yeah, to get different flavors out of the yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's that, so it's that kind of thing that's what and we're getting so, at. So, in principle, again, with the supercritical, the pressure is dropped and the temperature is dropped, so it preserves more of the natural flavor rather than giving you like so, a so it's a different pressures. Pressure think, is the right word, yeah, yeah, so think, it's different so pressures for different. I think thinking about it like uh, if you make jam, like strawberry jam, yeah, it tastes like strawberry jam, right. But if you ch taste a real strawberry, it doesn't taste like strawberry jam. And that's because in its natural form, it's like, you know, kind of the the molecules and the flavor is all kind of held together properly. Whereas when it's jam, it's cooked down and it's been kind of like heat, added heat and oxidized. Um, and so this, so in principle, by the supercritical CO2 extraction and the different layers, we're able to give you that complete profile rather than one style of extraction, if you know what I mean. Yeah, no, yeah, no, I get it, I get it, totally yeah. get it. It's when, because that's what I mean, it's when you explain it like that, it, it all makes sense. Yeah. And But without that kind of, you, you know, you're like, what the hell are the products? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I, um, so I this, think. So this one, again, like this passion fruit flavor profile that you, I think you get, it almost smells like, to me, when you smell these, it's chamomile, but also like smelling like a fresh passion fruit skin. You know, we haven't cracked, yeah. it, haven't cracked it open. And then when you taste it, that tastes like a cracked open passion fruit. Um, um, so this one as well is 1.8 uh, pH, which is uh, kind of similar across the range, but that's actually more sour than like than a lemon, mm. basically. Um, yeah, I will. That's the one thing I will sort of say about this. They have got that. I was going to sort of say citric kind yeah. of vibe to them, but yeah, yeah. They, they, they are. Yeah. You know, they're not. They are sweet, but they're not. Cloy. I don't know what the word is. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say cloyingly sweet, if you know yeah. what I mean. That. I, I don't. I, I know it's what I want to say, but. It's good coverage, but it makes you it makes you salivate. Mm. It's like um, it makes you want more. 
All right, so we've said that was uh, tequila one with that. Yep. What, what sort of spirit? Sort for of me, one? I would go for like a gin with this one. Yeah. Yeah, vodka or gin, I think, for, for uh, the rhubarb. For the timmer, I would go for like a, a white rum or a um, or tequila. Tequila. Yeah, yeah. Or you could go like, an, like a, mm. you know, a useful whiskey. So like. we're, we're gonna, we'll get on to the cocktails, but yep. we said sort of, uh, um, uh, that, that I've got the Margaret Paloma for that yes. one. What? So for gin. this one, just a, like a, like a, a gimlet. Gimlet. Yeah. Oh, like gimlet, gimlet or gimlet? Yeah, yeah. Oh, gimlet or gimlet, oh. sorry. Gim, gimlet. Poshini. Posh. I was kind of going to say gin, sorry, but I meant <laughs> yeah. Right, cool. A gimlet would be really good. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, like a Collins would work Collins. really well. Yeah. Bramble. Bramble. Crazy Bramble. Oh yeah, that'd be really good. Yeah, yeah. like a bramble with, with like. I would a... love to because that's one of my favourite. If I'm going to do gin cocktail, I'm rum through through. But if I'm going to do gin cocktails, I do quite like the yeah, nice. the bramble, but like proper blackberry, not yeah, like, nice. Not like shambles. We don't worry about shambles. Hey, don't. <laughs> <laughs> we actually, we actually quite like Monin's. Uh, I, I do. I'm, <laughs> openly and honestly, I've got. I've just swapped over for my hen party cocktail masterclasses. I've got the Monin liqueurs at home, and they've oh. actually blown me away. I've never oh, really? used it before. Oh, fantastic! I've got the peach, the uh, the blackberry, the muir, and the strawberry. Oh, brilliant! And they are, you know, they're really, fantastic. really good. Never used them. Before. Didn't even know they did it until Lisa did it in one of the the shows that we did. I was like, <laughs> really? Yeah. We so actually historically Monin started making liqueurs yeah. and then moved over to syrups. You know, so we d we still do work on the on liqueurs. It's just they're they're kind of like. Yeah, they just they're, they're just yeah. they're kind of they're, they're there in the background, a little work well, class. Become the modern brand ambassador for the liqueurs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So that I won't. I think that, I've, I've tried these already. Like this is my second time trying this. This this is my favourite one. This is amazing. But, right. So the third one. So the third one is white penja, which oh, is <clears throat> yes. Yeah, so, uh, this is a really interesting kind of product. Anyway, just as not just as paragon, but also kind of. Globally, this is actually becoming more prevalent. That this type of pepper is becoming more prevalent in gastronomy. Yeah. Uh, so, at uh, I think in 2013, I think it re uh, received like a, an appellation of control. You know, the the, oh, the, the controlled wow. region of, of production, uh, just to protect the heritage and protect the flavour profile as well. You know, things like this, um, and that that's really really helpful for the communities. And likewise, with all of these kind of products, they come from like they're grown in their communities, and the community they Areas of growth in their communities are at risk of like diversifying into other market, other other jobs and other industries, and it means that they that these products are, you know, not rare per se, but they could become rarer in the future, yeah. and they could be harder to get hold of. So we're trying to work with the communities to, to you know provide schooling, fair wages, all this kind of you know, fair fair purchasing, wow. fair, fair purchasing uh, agreements and things like this, because ultimately we want to be able to, you know make it work for them so that they keep growing it. Exactly. And then it works for us because we can use it in the products. So this is a really, really distinctive, and this is a true pepper, this one. Um, this is like really funky, really, I, someone described it the other day as like um, that kind of, uh, like almost like a, a saddle or a, le a horse leather. hair. Leather. Horse hair and leather. Okay, right. Um, someone said like, a, like an elephant enclosure at a zoo, at a zoo which oh, I think know? actually, <laughs> is, I think it's a really, really important flavor, flavor discussion. And I remember years ago going to a session, Ryan was doing a session about uh, Rancio yep. um, flavor profiles. And I think these were really incredible kind of, they, it was talking about the flavors that you basically, you know, you love to smell, but you know you shouldn't smell. You know, and it's like it's it's like a burgundy kind of style. You know, it's all those farmy, farmhousey flavors. As soon as you said yeah. that, that is. <laughs> yeah. So it might not sound very appealing, but what you get from this is you get this really, really, like it still tastes delicious. You know, have a taste. This for me is way more citric, way more mm. tan. Tan is not the right word, but it's almost a bit grapey. I think. Yep. And, a little uh, yep. bit, and I think this one actually has heat as well. Reminds me, yes. As soon as you said that, yeah. my head went, <coughs> excuse me, the head went wine. <laughs> yeah. Go on, you can tell they're quite tart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this one, this one, I think also you get a little bit of residual heat coming through from that as well, uh, from the pepper. Yeah, was it because it was hot? It was just a literal yeah. little bit of the citrus. But it's a really, That's really so. unusual and different flavour. And if you're looking for those, I would say that things like leather and horse horsehair and animalistic flavor profiles aren't things that we need that we have ingredients for so much in the in the drinks industry. But actually, in fragrance and in perfumes, le leather um, like you know colognes and things like this are really really popular. They just and it just hasn't really transferred. There's not really a product that we can find to use in the in the drinks industry. And I think this is actually a really good um, like kind of placement for that. Now I know it might sound if you were to write that on your list. 
horse hair, <laughs> elephant poo. You know, it's like it's not going to sell it. But it's gone where he's just going now. <laughs> yeah, but what you'll see is when you add this to to a whiskey cocktail, it just it just changes the I, game. Now that I've kind of got used to it a little, I was just swilling it around in my mouth there a little bit to try and open up the flavours. But what I got now is like this element of smoke. Yeah. Yes. Or, or what I would call sort of smokiness. Yeah, of that. yeah. It's, it's, I just got. A it's like a, it's a phenolic kind of. Yeah, I get like it. The weird thing now, and I, it's, I actually quite like the smell. But the way I'm going to try and describe it for you, it's like an Islay whiskey. Yeah. Like smell that glass now, and it, it just reminds me of an Islay whiskey. Yeah, amazing. I think that's a, that's a really good descriptor. <clears throat> so these peppers are like well, they're hand harvested by uh, women in this local community, and then they're fermented for you know, anyway. I think anywhere between seven and ten days, and then they're laid out in the sun. Uh, to dry out after that, and then they wow. basically roll them, and that's. So this was Cameroon. Like, is this Cameroon? Cameroon, this Cameroon. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. It's Penja from Cameroon. So just to read you the back of it, from the volcanic volcano soil of the Penya Valley, hand-picked and fermented white peppers with single with singular animal notes. <laughs> yeah, and I, this is this is why I think this is really exciting. Like for me, of the range, I think that probably the Penja is yeah. the most like the most bizarre. But also the most delicious and, and is, kind is of that because of your whiskey back? Is that yeah? Kind I think of... I think that's why I'm drawn to it. You know, those kind of like so, phenolic kind of barrelly flavors. <coughs> so we're going with whiskey as aged, a aged spirit. Yeah, aged spirits. Yeah. So you know, cognac would work really well in a sidecar. This really, really well okay, in a sidecar. Um, you know, like aged rums, bourbons, whiskeys. Uh, sorry, bourbon, scotch whiskey. I can tell. It's, it's when it's, it's this weird thing, you know. I've not got to the levels of bartender. I've kind of I'm the fun and friendly bartender sort of thing, the mass, the event bartender sort of thing. So I've not gone down the route of high end cocktail bartending in my career. Like I'm more about the disco bars yeah. and all that sort of stuff. But so what? Basically, what I'm trying to say is, I probably wouldn't have got to where Nate's going with these. But now that he's explained it, get them. I totally get it. I totally get the tequila vibes of that. I totally get where that would be gin. I totally and utterly get where this would be sort of, a, for yeah. me, a kind of a whiskey. So this is the thing as well, like these ingredients aren't scary. I know that like the idea of using leather and horse hair and it's because it could sound like a scary ingredient, but the one of the main reasons for this is it's like adding flavor in a simple way. You know, this is like 10 to 15 mil in your drink and it's gonna just absolutely, you know, Game change everything. That's that's the that's the next sort of but question I was going to come on to when when we were doing the whole cocktail. So go on. Yeah. You can... No, I was going to say you can add it to all your classics, yeah. your your usual your usual favourites. You know, like anything you like, you can add this to, and it will just elevate it. Would you? I don't know what cocktails you've got lined up, and I'm sorry if we're going to cover this, but would you kind of? My head went sort of old fashioned with that. Mm, yeah. But and then I kind of thought whiskey sour. Would you use that instead of? I think you might need, I don't know, I think you might you need a little need bit of sugar or something just to kind of balance it out slightly, but I, I don't know, I'm not you could replace. Mean. You could replace the sugar, but I probably would, in a whiskey sour, I probably would add like the, the lemon in there as yeah. well, just because otherwise it's going to be like a really short drink as yeah. well. I, yeah, I guess so, I guess so. <laughs> Basically my head was, where my head is, it, there is those massive sort of citrusy, citric notes to it. Yeah, yeah. So we do add, like I say, we do add citric acid to this, yeah. but also we add gluconic acid, and that's the kind of like, that's that. It's, it's what gives you this long sustaining kind of feel. And actually gluconic acid is, I've seen it in, in more and more in um, non-alcoholic spirits. And so this is where, this is the oh, other yeah, kind of yeah. side of it. Like paragon is a really good way to kind of give body and texture to non-alcoholic spirits. Yeah. So for example, I had a, a non-alcoholic spirit the other day and I thought it was delicious, but it just, it, it, the, it wasn't sustained. And it yeah. was really like the, the, the flavor profile was just, just it, it just finished so quickly in my mouth. Whereas if you had something like this, that will give you that body and texture that you're looking for in a you know full spirit, but add it into a non alcoholic Completely, spirit. utterly agree with that. I mean, the, the finish, I mean, let, you know, guys, a lot of you know that I do a lot of rum tastings and stuff like that. So when I get to the point where I'm talking about the finish and how, whether it's long, medium or short, I know these are nothing even like that, but the finish on those, the flavors just do not disappear. Yeah. For a very long time, they are they are still yeah bouncing off my tongue everywhere on that. Yeah, and we've seen bartenders using this instead of like non alcoholic spirits. You know, this is kind of like a part of that a part of that process. Um, would you kind of you just really dumb it down? Would you kind of use them as a in a, in a gin and tonic like those with tonic? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'd probably use like you know maybe like fifteen, 15 to twenty. No. For 20 to that's 10, sorry. 10. That's where the question I was yeah. going with. What, what sort of? I know we're going to do some cocktails in a sec, but what's are we sort of talking like 10, 15 mils? We're talking. Yeah. 
25 mils we're talking if you five. go for if you go for 25 mils it's like you're just going to get a load of texture load. which is absolutely fine if that's what you want um but ultimately i would say 15 to 20 is probably i i, I think a sweet point for yeah. most of, for most of the cocktails we're going to make today because the thing i'll come on to as well these are sort of slightly smaller they're for the random size bottles for some reason 48.5 that's not even half of anything is it yeah, it was, no, but uh, so I was just trying to think of random because obviously yeah. Monin's a French brand. Um, We're a bit but, more fortunate because it's not a spirit; it doesn't yeah. have to conform to any. It doesn't have to conform oh. to that, that other size. Ah, right. So yeah, forty-eight point five or four hundred and eighty-five mil. Yeah. That's yeah. right, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ, it's, it's Monday morning. Um, yeah, so slightly smaller bottles, but obviously, you know, that's the point. I try and get across with a lot of the syrup brands and stuff. You know, you don't need like twenty-five mil shots in. No. No, no. I think a, lot, a little goes a long way with this. And as Gordon Ramsay says, you can always add more, but you can't take away. Exactly. So. Exactly. He's been listening to my cocktail masterclasses. <laughs> right. Are we, are we doing uh, just, yes. a, a, just a drink for each, like just yep. to demonstrate kind of a... Yeah. Do you know what? Now he's I'll get one is sort of doing all that. I might actually retract that. I, this, this one, this, this last one, this, um, what's it, this one, this? The, the, the camera in the white penya, white penny pepper. This is the one that's intriguing me, actually. I'm, I'll keep coming back to sip that. Because it's got all these different layers coming off. And, you know, the middle one that I thought was my favourite, I think it still might be, because it's the fun, fruity one. I'm still blown away, by the way, that these are pe these the fruit flavours that come off this are just coming from a pepper. I mean, that really does blow me away. But this, this last one, this is bonkers. <laughs> Absolutely bonkers. And that's the thing. It, it's that, like I say, it's that... And that rancio set of flavours where it's stuff you really want to smell, but you know you really shouldn't. Yeah, you know, it's like I, I think it's that thing for me because, as I say, my my career, my my background is those fun and fruity drinks. So I've never really immersed myself until the last sort of five years or so into proper. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to call it ego tending. We that we have banter with them, but you know that proper high end cocktails. I'm just thinking because I'm now training my palate, doing the whole rum. Uh, journey and all that sort of stuff is really fascinating with me because I just wouldn't have picked up those flavours yeah. 10 years ago. And you youngsters behind the bar now, you know, you 20 year olds, you way for I When I first died, we couldn't even get cranberry juice behind the bar. <laughs> you know, we couldn't make woo woos. Genuinely true. You know, that's going back to mid 95. How old are you? 38. Yeah. No, yeah, I've got, seven, I've got seven years on him, but you know. So you would have grown up with cranberry juice beyond the bar. Uh, yeah, yeah, see. yeah. I, the, the first cocktail I ever made was called a hot pants. Hey. It was, uh, <laughs> tequila, creme de menthe, and pineapple. I think it was. Okay. And that's the first cocktail I ever made. So, wow. Um, right. And I think I was eighteen, just my first ever kind of bar job working at a holiday camp back home. Martini Rosso and lemonade. <laughs> nice. Nineteen ninety five. Closely nice. followed by Gordon's Gin and Schweppes Tonic. And then I got shouted out for pouring a whole bottle of tonic in. Don't do that! In those little Paris goblet glasses with a wafer thin slice of lemon. <laughs> cool. Right, so, let's get on. Let's, we, we are set up. We've got a highball glass. Yep, highball glass. I'm just going to make... Crystal clear ice. Yes, Jesus. beautiful ice here at Tarifendale. Um, that's why I come here. We, I'm we, we, can't, we can't really say it, but Tarifendale. Yep. You've got to come here. It's cool little bar, this. Right. So we're going to use uh, Timberberry, okay? Um, we'll, we'll see, because hopefully the close-up oh, is there. Yeah. So, no, that's all right. That's all right. We're going to get some angles going on. Yeah, we're going to use Timberberry uh, syrup. So we're going to use uh, 20 ml of Timberberry. Oh, he's got the Mezcla Prestigio there as well, yeah, look. Nice. Uh, and then we're going to add uh, 50 ml of uh, aged tequila. Tequila. El, El Tequino. El Tequino. Oh, loving the old Mezcla Prestigio. Oh, I've got a little, I need one of these as well. We've got like a little water spouty, yep. wincy thing. And then we're just going to add some soda water on top. That's it. So to keep 50 ml of tequila, 15, 20. Uh, 20. 20 ml of the yep. team. Team of berry. Team yep. of berry. And then we're just going to give and it a little stir. Just some soda. Kind of I've seen some straws. Good old paper yep. straws. And I think with this, like this part of the kind of the pleasure. Ta in taste your white first before you, as a, as a decent chef would do, they would taste it, make sure it's all right for the customer. Amazing. Um, part of the principle with these as well is that, you know, we're about simplicity of flavor. I don't necessarily think you need a garnish with these. Obviously, you can put a garnish in there. It just gives that nice, you know, nice look for the customer. But obviously, just for us right now, I think that is amazing. It's like instant Paloma. <laughs> that is crazy. 
that is, a, I, I totally agree with you on the garnish, by the way. I kind of like the dehydrated yeah, I, stuff, fat free and all exactly, that. Exactly, yeah. I think the, you know, for me, obviously, a, a nice lime yeah. beer would be, would be, would be nice. Yeah, yeah, I mean, what I was customer. going to say, if you, for me, actually, if you squeeze the lime in there, that'll probably ruin what's actually in the drink yeah. already. A no, dehydrated I'm, lime might be nice yeah. because I guess it would infer that you get this kind of lime essence wow. to it. But that's, it's kind. Of, I mean, it's key that really does shine through in that. And you've got those, I mean, I can taste the, the agave on that tequila. That's a proper, I've never seen that brand of tequila, by the way, okay. but that's a proper, <coughs> and mate, you can taste the quality of that tequila. Yeah. Proper. And, yeah. These guys are, the, the company that import this are in Manchester, actually. Oh, they, yeah. they, that, that's what we use. I mean, but that does allow the tequila to really shine through. That is, oh, I yeah, like really that. Good. I like that. Really, really easy. And, all right, I'm not going to talk because uh, I know uh, different uh, brands that have brands, different um, accounts will have different prices, but I could give you a rough ballpark figure on that. You know, you are talking with the soda, probably on a decent tequila, probably close to about two pounds, two pound 10, two pound 20 for that drink. You know, yep. you can easily, I don't know what Manchester prices are like, but Cambridge, <laughs> London. I don't know, what would, what would that go in a bar at? Uh, probably anywhere between nine to 10 pounds, I guess. Right, exactly, that's exactly what I was going to say down, uh, down south. Yeah. You know, yeah. London probably even way more than that. But yeah. the, the margins on these simple drinks are just... Yeah, I mean, this is like the the simplicity of production and just kind of getting out there. Obviously, you know, the, the more elaborate you make the garnish, the more appealing it's going to be to customers. So hopefully they'll, they'll order more or when it goes out, people might order them. But it's just about simplicity and ease. However, that said, you know, when we when we kind of use this with the bartenders and actually on our global campaign is we get bartenders to kind of make drinks with them and then we feature them on the website. Um, you know, uh, yeah. they go elaborate and I, they go crazy. I was going to say, I can, like I can imagine so many different yeah. ways. I can imagine bartenders adding something to gronies and, and yeah, things like that. Yeah, absolutely. That, so, uh, I forget which one it was, down the Cameroon? No, which yeah. the last one we had? Uh, uh, the horse one. The, 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 pe one. the penja. The penja. I can see some bartenders going down the route of a boulevardier and adding a slight little yeah. twist in there for a boulevardier, that sort of crazy sort of. Yeah, I think as well, like, you know, a bit of acidity is a, bit of acidity is a, welcome, yeah. a welcome cousin to every drink, I think, but um, I like that. I I'll not, keep my I've, opinions I've got to literally drive back to Cambridge after this, so but every bun in my body wants to finish that. <laughs> okay. That's amazing, that's number one. Right, number two. <clears throat> Next up, uh, we'll do a gimlet. Um, or a gimlet. A gimlet. Um, what class are we going for this? We are going to use a, a coupe. A coupe. Oh, he's going to shake, isn't he? Oh, we're going to see his shake face. Well, do you, do you go, have you got any flair skills like Lee? Lee claims to have flair. Uh, so I used to work at Hard Rock Cafe <laughs> a, long, oh. a long time ago. Oh, so we kind of flair bartending was kind of a part of working there. I might, I might sort of stand over here. Let I won't do any, though. <laughs> <laughs> you need to drop the cocktail. Yeah, so thing. let's not get into the discussion as to whether or not uh, Gimlet should be shaken or stirred. Um, I think that this drink actually works pretty well with a little shake, so um, I'm going to shake this one. Oops. I'm having banter at the moment about, um, like with the whole tiki cocktails thing, about um, shaking with crushed ice and shaking with um, cubed ice, but then dirty dump sort of thing. Nice. People have been abusing me for dirty dumping. I, I, I swear by dirty dumping. Dirty dumping with a couple of big ice cubes and then topping up with crushed ice. For me, the perfect dilution. Oh yeah, especially but for I'm, speed I'm not as well. Going to go into that. Yeah, know? especially for speed. So <clears throat> this one is just um, uh, 20 ml of the uh, roux again. Roux. Or the passion fruit one. The passion fruit. Yep, yep, yep. And then we're going to add 50 ml of the um, gin. Of the gin, yeah. Bombay. Bombay. And then we're just going to shake. Well, there'd be some Manchester gin up here. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's what, I'm using what's he's, in the speed. He's not looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using what's in the speed rail today. Sorry, Dave. Um, there you go. We have got some uh, for, for Nick, though. We have got some Pierre from Nick. All right, it's the plantation, Nick. Right, the shape. <laughs> See, here's another dull story for you. Because I'm, I'm a shaker up here, but that dang half like, killed my rotator yeah. cuff. So I'm trying to shake like, like that. I can't do that. I'm trying to, but I can't. It feels awkward. High and hard, that's yeah. the, that's the, what I was So you got out of bartending quite early then. If you're 38 and you haven't bartended, you got yeah, out of bartending like, well, in your 30s. Well, yeah, when I was, wow. when I was working for, uh, for the whiskey brand, I was still, like, as a brand ambassador, I was still making drinks for, you know, kind of events and kind of bars and specs and stuff like this. So, you know, it is all, it is still kind of like a, a passion of mine to yeah. make drinks. And part of my role as well is to, you know, kind of devise drinks for accounts and, and you know, kind of large groups and stuff like that. And I actually really like the challenge of making 
simple serves yep. uh, and, and kind of working with large groups where I've got to think about volume. It's got to be a taste of drink, original and with volume. And you've always got to work to the, I, don't, I mean this in the nicest the possible way, but to the, the lowest skilled. Yeah. You can train, of course you can, but you know, bars in this day and age, we do have high time turnover yeah. of staff. So you've always got to cater to the so, but simple drinks coming to mind. So, three ingredients? Two. Two, uh, three. two, two ingredients. Two. Two. Yeah, two ingredients. I was going to yeah. say. Gin yeah. and, hang on, 50 ml of gin. Yeah. 20 ml of. Yeah. I probably could have shook it a little bit longer. But. And the, the old gimlet, let's call it a gimlet. I kind of like it. I'm going I'm to call it the gimlet. Please call it a gimlet. <laughs> <laughs> I, just actually, I just was going to say gin, that's all. And the gimlet is? Uh, with the blueberry. Yeah. No, no, no. Standard gimlet. Oh, standard gimlet, yeah. Go on. Recipe? Uh, 50, 50 gin, 25 Rose's lamb cordial. I was, I was waiting. I'm probably going to get fired was, for saying no, a lamb cordial. No, I was going to say lamb cordial. I was 100% going lamb cordial. I didn't know whether he was going lime juice and sugar. Right. Well, I think it, the original recipe it's is... It's lime cordial. It's roses, isn't it? Rose's lamb yeah, cordial, sure I think. I'm sure Craig Harper will ch chirp in somewhere. That's so clean. And yeah. for a rum lover, that is so clean, crisp, refreshing. So this works the, really the well. Little, the, the, the passion, the, the sort of fruity you note know, is coming right off the end there. Yeah. Well, again, works really well with uh, white rum. That, like, almost like a, like a quick fix daiquiri, I guess. I would love to. I might have to get a bottle of this. Yeah. I might have, have to plate. get that for, it, for daiquiris and all that. I'm doing blog series at the moment, me personally. Like a daiquiri sort of, like, oh, nice. just riffing up daiquiris. I would love to taste that with some like, proper... I'm actually going to say funky white rum, to be fair. We'll have a little play with that. Wow. And that, so that, for me, is even cheaper than the first drink because there's no soda water. And all right, some of you might be getting soda water off the guns, but if you've got a can of soda water, wherever they've gone, you know, the cans are going to be sending you back, what, 20, 30, 40p. So it's even cheaper. Yeah. You're welcome. Wow. Um, and then lastly, we're going to do the penja. Penja. Yeah. So <clears throat> for this one, we're going to do an old-fashioned style yeah. drink. Um, and we're going to do uh, just 10 mil of the penja on this one. And then we're going to add some bourbon. Um, and then we're going to add... Um, How do you know which one's bits from the back? Huh? How do you know which one's bits from the back? I can see the, the recipe. Oh, it's really there, isn't it? <laughs> so again, with, with, with an old-fashioned, I spent uh, four years of my career working as a brand ambassador, telling people how to make old-fashions consistently and quickly. So I'm a firm believer in using a syrup over a... We don't faff around with sugar cute and angostura bitters. Oh my God, that's like 19, 1980s, 1990s. Yeah, there's a lot of historical relevance as well in kind of using a, um, uh, a sugar syrup as well. Um, because in the 1800s, sugar was sold, uh, early 1800s anyway, sugar was sold in loaves. That were, they had to shave off the sugar, render it down into a syrup. So it would have actually probably wow. been a syrup, a syrup anyway. Like loaves, as in like bread? No, they were like conical uh, okay. kind of cone shapes. As you can see- <laughs> I, I had no idea, Jeffrey. <laughs> when you said loaves, my head just went for a loaf of bread. Sorry, loaves is the term for it, but yeah, it basically looks like- it. As in loaves, yeah. as in like loaves. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And then just some Angus syrup bitters. Bitters. So again, he went, he went for the cheap and nasty uh, bourbon. <laughs> oh, wow. Should have done this yesterday so I could have had a few drinks yesterday and then dri driven over today. <laughs> Any guesses for looks the bourbon? Like, <laughs> look, looks like a barfly uh, bar spoon there as well. I don't know. Might be. Uh, Cocktail Kingdom, these ones. Oh, okay. Yep. We sell barfly drinks, though. Sorry. <laughs> it's, not, it's not your bar, is it? <laughs> mm. I don't know. Now, for me as well, this work would work really well in a, in a, in a julep as well. Um, I, th I feel I have a real kind of unpopular opinion about juleps. Go on. I like them, but I like them with acidity in them. Um, I, I totally, yeah. I feel that it's, it's your, without, your, without it's acidity. Run up, rum geek coming through. Yeah, yeah. without without rum, uh, without acidity, sorry. I think a julep is a broken classic, but that's a unpopular opinion. I, no, I totally agree. He's, he's in a mojito vibes are coming out, that's why. So three, quite, quite punchy. Three ingredients: whiskey, bitters, penya, penya, yep. and bitters. One dash, two dash, uh, three. Did. Three dashes. Yeah, it's quite quite punchy, but again, kind of gives you this real nice like. Maybe for a rum old fashioned, that would be really good as well. Layers. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Part of me wants to get the Woodford. I haven't tasted Woodford Frazier's, but I'm getting these. I'm getting this real massive smoky here. Is that just coming off that syrup? Yeah. Is that? Well, it probably will be coming from the Woodford as well. 
But yeah. again, it's about it's about partnering up with, with these products. No, it's a hundred percent. There is a little bit coming off that Woodford. So think about it in, in this way: like w Woodford has you know two hundred tasting notes, and it's you know these different kind of like call outs of flavour that it gets from the process of barrels and stuff like this. So it goes through fermentation, like fermentation, uh, distillation, and barreling. This just goes through maceration, distillation, and supercritical super CO2 extraction for one ingredient to, to bring out all that flavor. So this is like why it's kind of, Bonkers. why it's really Right, let's get these in the right order. So Timor Berry is? Uh, Rue was the middle one. Middle one, Timor Berry is that one. Yep. And then, so that's, so just for, I'll, I'll sort this out, we'll faff it around for the camera, just for the old cameras, that's, that's the first sort of serve yep. we did there. Uh, so tequila, soda water, and 20 mil of that. Yep. Um, what are we calling that? Night special. <laughs> night special number one. I think that's like almost like just a, <laughs> a Paloma, Paloma and soda. Yeah, we'll this that. is the Rueberry. Oh, this is, oh, I don't know which one's my favorite, actually. I'm annoyed that he hasn't done a rum cocktail for me, but we can uh, do a rum I, drink, I drink rum now, no, no, it's fine. I've got to drive anyway. So, you know, but I, you know, these are three spirits that I don't actually drink that much of, and I love every single one of those. So that's, wow, it's simple. It's like, it just fascinates me what bartenders have, the luxury that they have these days yeah. to play around with and to create, because the, their whole remit is to create drinks for customers and to get people coming back to the bars and you know yeah. to sell more stuff. When we take this around, everyone is just like, wow, that's amazing. And I, like they really like that. And I think that's <clears throat> one thing as bartenders we need to remember is that we need to make drinks people like. Yeah. And I think this is, these products having in you know, Arsenal really helps make and that easier. such a different palette these days. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Is there anything we've missed that you've, you want to cover, that you want to put in there, or are you, is this covered? I think this is a good starting point, but ultimately, oh. you know, what we, what we want for, for bartenders to, to use these and, and, and basically kind of add their own spin on it, yeah. you know, and kind of represent themselves in these products as well, you know, and, and represent their, their venues and their bars and their customers as well, you know, and add us on uh, Instagram, yeah. like so you can send in your recipes, the, the, we feature them online. This is what I was just gonna sort of sign off with and get off there. So, I mean, I was gonna say, well, I wasn't gonna say, but if you're thinking, I'll ask Steve some questions, comments in there. Look, if you do comment on the video below, if you've got any questions, I know uh, Elsa from Monin and the team do dive into the comments, but I will make sure that we pass it on to them. Go and look Nate up on, what's your? Instagram, uh, Instagram Nathaniel, your, yeah. at Nathaniel Booker. Yeah, go now, I'll, I'll put that in the, in the description below. He's certainly the one from Monin that you can ask the questions about now, and I know he's more than well welcome to that. If you're up north, ask him to pop in and kind of. Uh, yeah, uh, you'll see. Up north, if you if you're north of Bad north of uh, Watford, <laughs> <laughs> I, I love when brands say that. Yeah, my area north. Where, where's north? North of the M25. Yeah. Well, we have focus, but, but yeah. But yeah, but um, I mean, obviously, you can buy that from drink stuff. Of course, you can. <laughs> but. You, you know, you know the drill. You, there's other supplies out there, but drink stuff's your number one shop, isn't it? But, mate, thank you so, so much. I, I cannot, I'm, I'm going to go down. Is there a hashtag? Do people, like, do you, is there a hashtag that people have tagged in, like, Paragon? Yeah, yeah, hashtag Paragon Cordial. Paragon Cordial. Yeah. I'm quite interested to go down the Instagram route now after yeah. this when I get home and just sort of see what other bartenders have kind of uh, created off that. Yeah. So, yeah, hashtag Paragon Cordial, just to kind of see what other recipes are out there. Are these in Europe? I oh, guess they are. It's a French brand. Yeah, yeah. So, so, in the last two years, we're standing like it's the you know it's we are rolling out in more and more yeah. countries. So recently, we had a big launch in uh, Croatia in Zagreb, wow. which I went to Zagreb. I didn't go for there for uh, Paragon, but it was an amazing city. Lots of cool bars there, so make sure you check that out. Um, launched in France. Uh, it's launching in Germany soon as well. So it's really having a, a real kind wow. of uh, and I think in the Middle East and some countries in the Middle East as well. Obviously, you have to be careful about the alcohol yeah. content because some of them they are is zero point zero five percent alcohol. So there's only certain, certain countries you can work with there. But wow. but yeah, rolling out all over the world. Amazing. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and we shall see you next time. <laughs>